share your screen? Yes. Nice background, Robert. Where is that? Oh, this is Mount Rainier in Washington State. Does everyone see the screen? Yeah, it seems good. I guess uh, I guess we can continue, or should we wait uh, thirty seconds? Uh, let's just start. Okay, well, it's ten past. Okay, so uh, next next talk by Nat Tanti Karan on drawing witness dualities for translation invariant Hamiltonians in any dimension. Um, thank you for uh, the organizers for putting together this workshop and for inviting me to give this talk. Um, today I'm going to be talking about um, uh, generalization of jordan wigner dualities in any dimension. Um, this paper is based on this archive number, which has been recently published in PR research. Um, so let me uh, begin with um, epitome of 1D dualities that people are, are uh, hopefully familiar with. Um, the first is the Kramers Monia duality which uh, maps uh, transverse dual Ising model into, its dual, into itself uh, via, via uh, inverse of the uh, uh, coupling constant. So uh, usually when we think of the transverse dual Ising model, uh, usually I'm, for, throughout this talk, I'm gonna uh, stick to a zero temperature. And I'm going to, the duality is a duality between uh, uh, the phase of a paramagnet and a phase of a ferromagnet. So um, if you Mac X to ZZ and ZZ to X, um, you'll find that um, the, the Hamiltonian here is exactly the same and you just uh, swap uh, G to one over G. So in one phase, the uh, excitations are, uh, uh, quasi, the quasi particles are just spin flips, they are charges. On the other hand, there are domain walls. And uh, the duality, by doing this, you can sort of think of this as uh, flipping uh, this figure. So whenever you have a paramagnet, it maps to a ferromagnet. Whenever you have a ferromagnet, it maps to a paramagnet. On the other hand, there is also another famous 1V duality, which is the jordan wigner duality. Um, uh, this maps a, a spinless fermion system into a, a spin system of qubits. And for these two phases, the paramagnet and the ferromagnet, you can also think of it as being two phases in the fermion system. One is where you just have an atomic insulator where all the states are paired up uh, into one physical fermion. Here, these two uh, blue dots are, are Majorana fermions. However, if I pair them up in a different way, I will get a uh, edge state, which is a Majorana zero mode. Um, and, and for people who are interested, the people have been trying to use this for quantum computation as well, although that will not be the main focus here. So I'd like to mention um, current Z2 generalizations of the kramers wania duality. So um, beyond 1D, um, people have been talking about kramers wania duality in higher dimensions. So if you have a 2D transverse seal Ising model, you can do a kramers wania duality and um, you would get a, a Z2 gauge theory. And in the deconfined phase, you'll find a uh, Hamiltonian, which is the torque code. Um, and this has been done um, quite a while ago. Um, more recently, people have been talking about higher form symmetry, uh, like the one form symmetry that uh, Dominic was just mentioned. And um, there you can also do a Kramer's one year duality. To, you start with a one form paramagnet and you do a Kramer's one year duality and you can also get a torque code. But now what you mean by charge is not uh, in the 3D Tor code is not uh, the E point particle, but is now the M loop. So your M loop is a charge under this higher form symmetry. And even more recently, people have been talking about subsystem symmetries, which are related to uh, these new phases called fracton phases. And for example, there are models of these, uh, of the X cube model or Haas code which uh, also has a, a version of a Kramer's one duality. You can start with some Ising term that is like a plaquette or some uh, fractal shape. And if you do the Kramer's one duality, you get a fracton model 
um, which has weird properties such as ex uh, extensive uh, ground state degeneracy that is uh, robust. Now, on the other hand, the Jordan Wigner dualities hasn't uh, has only been recently uh, figured out. So for higher dimensions, there is a version that has been uh, worked out by these people. And um, the goal of this talk is to generalize this jordan Wigner duality of higher dimensions to include uh, versions where you also have higher form symmetry or even subsystem symmetry. So instead of um, the, one of the features of uh, this jordan Wigner duality is that uh, you can obtain a spin system where uh, uh, point excitations are, uh, are, are fractons. In, for example, in, in Haas code, uh, they can only uh, rest at the, the, the endpoints of this uh, fractal shape. But at the same time, because I've done a jordan Wigner duality from fermions, these endpoints that are fractons are also fermion, emergent fermions in a spin system. So that is the motivation. And let me give a quick outline. I'm gonna review these generalized kramers one duality and jordan Wigner dualities. And I'm gonna give an explicit example, which is a fermion in, with plaquette hopping model. And I'm gonna jordan Wigner that to a twisted version of the X cube model, which is a fracton model, which I'll briefly review. And then I'm going to uh, talk about how we can use this to give a new view on SPT phases, symmetry protected topological phases. And then if I have time, I'm going to talk a bit about how we can bosonize well-known Majorana codes to obtain new um, stabilizer codes. So let me start with um, how the kramer zwania duality map works. So basically, the idea is very simple. So suppose I have a transversial Ising model, which with the term x and zz, what I do is I for each uh, Ising term, I map this ZZ to X at the, the same position. For example, this Ising variable lives on the link. So I map X to a link. And to preserve the commutation relations, I map X to Z on all the other, on, on all the links which are adjacent to this. So basically on all the, uh, I, the position of all the Ising terms with which anti commute with this X. So you can see that if you do this mapping from left to right, the, uh, the commutation of the, all of the variables are preserved. Um, and what this enforces is that, for example, it, for, it, it, at the level of uh, operators, this is totally fine, but at the level of states, it sort of restricts you a bit. For example, because the product of all these uh, uh, vertex terms are identity, this enforces on this side uh, Z2 symmetry, which is a spin flip of all poly X's uh, equal to one. On the other hand, if you multiply all the Ising terms around a plaquette, that gives you the plaquette term in the torque code. And this plaquette term can be viewed as a one form symmetry. So it's defined for any closed loop. Also, this loop doesn't need to be contractible. If I have a product of Z's around the uh, closed loop of the torus, you also get a constraint of uh, multiplying all these poly x's. Um, and so you can say that the, the ground state of the, I, the paramagnet um, is, is, uh, can be considered uh, the ground state of the toric code under these uh, symmetry constraints. So when, when this is a paramagnet, the toric code is deconfined. When this is a ferromagnet, the torque code is confined. Um, so similarly, you can define a uh, generalized jordan Wigner transformation. Um, so the idea is I replace X with a fermion parity, which I can write using, uh, which I can uh, break my complex fermion into two Majorana fermions, gamma and gamma prime. And the idea is if I replace X with fermion parity and I replace Z with uh, either gamma or gamma prime, then you can do a similar mapping where I map P to a, uh, the fermion parity to a product of Z operators living on these uh, living on these links. However, I need to I can also map uh, this fermion hopping term into X with with the catch that these terms don't actually uh, always commute. 
because for example, this gamma prime and this gamma prime, if I, if I put this, uh, this hopping term next to this hopping term, they actually don't commute. And then, so I need to fix that by putting poly Zs at certain positions to preserve the commutation relation. So uh, for example, in this duality, you can check that um, the commutations of the uh, fermionic operators over here uh, are the same as the commutations of the poly operators over here. And in general, this uh, prescription, you might ask, uh, how, do you, how do I know I can always put Zs here such that um, the commutation relations are the same? Um, let me give a very quick proof, which is probably the most technical slide of this talk. So the basic idea is that when you map uh, these uh, hopping operators to poly X's, which I've denoted in red just for coloring, um, there, are, there are two positions of which they anti-commute. For example, if they anti-commute like this, you can either make the polys anti-commute by putting a blue, a blue poly Z here so that this one anti-commutes, or I put a blue poly Z here. So you either have to choose to put a poly Z here or here, and only one of this is enough. And there's another position where the anti-commute, you need to choose either to put poly Z here or, or poly Z here. And the point is that um, there are always two such positions, and you only need to pick half of them to make everything work. And the way you can think of that is for all of the hopping operators that anti-commute, you can write an adjacency matrix of the anti-commutations. And um, this, this matrix is symmetric because uh, I've noted which pairs anti-commute. And I just need to construct, uh, I just need to place these at half of them, which I can choose to be this um, upper triangular matrix. And all other choices um, will give me, will, will also work. So that's a proof that um, this duality, this jordan wigner duality always exists. Um, so let me get back to the 2D example. So in this duality, you can map um, the, the fermionic variables to the, to the uh, poly variables as such. And they also uh, give similar constraints. For example, if I have a product of all these vertex terms here, um, I get a constraint which is a, 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 a global fermion parity symmetry here. On the other hand, there's a weird set of uh, combinations of uh, hopping and uh, fermion parity operators that product to identity. This uh, enforces a weird constraint on this side. But if you stare at it carefully, you'll see that actually this is just a plaquette term of the toric code times um, the vertex term of the toric code. And um, if you, uh, so if I choose a P, to be my stabilizer on the fermion side, that means that um, I'm, I'm in the atomic insulator state. If I map this, this gives me the vertex term of the Tor code. And I also have a new stabilizer, which is the pla plaquette times the vertex term. So actually this also, the ground state of this model also just maps to um, the, the 2D Tor code. So, and we know that the, the, the 2D Tor code has an emergent uh, fermion particle. So the uh, difference between Kramer's one area is that the charge under uh, the charge of, of, of the spin model maps to an E in the Tor code, whereas in the uh, jordan wigner duality, the charge here will map to an F particle in the Tor code, and um, those two ground states will be the same. But that doesn't say that um, the if I do this in higher dimensions, it'll be the same. For example, um, uh, here's a list of all the, 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 the fermionic systems I consider. And um, there are examples where if you start with, for example, in a, uh, a 3D with global fermion parity symmetry, you will get um, a different dual model, which is a, a, a 3D torque code where the excitations are fermions instead of bosons. And that's known to be a, a different model from the usual uh, 2D Tor code. And that's uh, also related to this uh, Walker Wong model that uh, Dominic just mentioned. Um, so now let me give you a general prescription of how, how you can uh, obtain uh, a, new, uh, a new stabilizer code 
from given an Ising model or a certain CSS code under uh, a transverse field. So suppose I give you a CSS code. Uh, what you can do is um, um, you can add a transverse field so that you can perform a Kramer's Bouanier duality into a uh, generalized Ising model. Now from this generalized Ising model, what you only need to do is you replace X with fermion parity and replace Z with one of the Majorana fermions. And now you get a fermion model with a generalized hopping term. And from that, you can use the jordan Wigner duality to obtain a new uh, quote unquote twisted stabilizer model. And by this, it means that the particle content will look ex uh, exactly the same as your original CSS code. Uh, but now uh, your, 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 your excitations will be fermions instead of bosons. And as an example, I'm going to talk about starting from the X-cube model. Um, I, uh, you can do a Kramer's one duality to get the plaquette Ising model. And from that, replacing that, you get fermions with plaquette hopping. Using the jordan Wigner duality, you get the twisted X-cube model. Um, so let me also mention that you can do similar things with Haas code with fractal excitations, and you can get a version of uh, twisted Haas code. But today, let me give the example of X cube. So for those who are not familiar with X cube, let me just give a flash review. So the X cube model is very similar to the Tor code. Um, instead, you have these vertex terms, which are poly X's, and there are three of them on a, a cubic lattice in 3D. And you also have this cube term, which composed of 12 poly Z's on the edges of each cube. And um, there are the excitations that are of interest are these fracton excitations. So if you consider acting with a sheet, a membrane of poly X's in the, uh, in the configuration shown, you'll see that um, since all these terms commute, you can see that it, it excites only the cube terms at the end, since it has one on anti-commutation. And it excites four particles. And this particle is a fracton, it means that it's immobile because there is no process which allows this particle to move. For example, if I act with a red uh, poly operator here, instead of hopping this guy here, it also creates, uh, yeah, suppose I act with a red poly here, it'll, it'll annihilate this one, but it also create three more. So it does not allow this uh, uh, particle to move. And that's why it's called a fracton excitation. So there are other interesting properties, such as the ground state degeneracy of this, part of, uh, of this model scales with the system size and it's robust. Um, but let me um, explain the, uh, how you obtain this from a kramers wania duality. So instead of a usual Ising model, what you can consider what is called a plaquette Ising model, where the Ising term are four body poly Zs on each plaquette of a square of a of, of a cubic lattice and there are three types so we uh we just uh follow the the formula i explained you map each uh poly z uh each plaquette term to a poly x and here i've gone to the dual lattice so instead of writing um a z on a plaquette i went to the dual lattice and here i have the edge dual to that so that is this edge over here and you just need and for a poly X, you map it to a, a, a product of poly Z's of all the plaquette terms with anti-commute with it. And then um, you can sort of stare in it and you see that there are sort of 12 terms. And by going to the dual mod, uh, by going to the dual lattice, that's exactly this uh, cube term. And now the, the, the product of the, the plaquette, sorry, the vertex terms of uh, X cube come from a constraint, which is the product of four plaquettes um, around this cube is equal to the identity. And if you go to the dual lattice, once you map it, you'll see that this gives you a product of four X's, that's identity. And those are the stabilizers of the X cube model. So now let me tell you how to obtain the twisted version. As I said, you only need to uh, replace X with Fermion parity replace Z with uh, a Majorana fermion. And I'm gonna do that in one, two, three. And now 
I've changed this to a fermionic system. And now I just need to find, uh, I just need to map this plaquette term to a poly X decorated by a bunch of poly Zs that make this algebra work. And I've shown, I've proven that it always works. And here is one choice. Um, if I, now similarly, the constraints of the X cube are like this. If I change this to fermions, they give me uh, a similar constraint. Now, instead of this vertex term, I have uh, extra poly Zs uh, living at these positions. So to conclude, uh, I've used the fermionic system to uh, obtain a twisted X cube model where the, the Q term is the same, but now the constraints of this model give me these modified vertex terms where instead of just poly X, I have these poly Zs living around here. And um, from this model, uh, in order to, now the catch is that, the, how do I show that this is a, uh, an excitation, this is a fermion now because, um, I cannot just use a poly, a red uh, poly X to excite this because this will violate uh, some of the constraints on, on these other stabilizers. So it turns out that you need to use um, the, the hopping operators I've shown before. So instead of that, that a single red, a red poly X, I need to also decorate it with all of these poly Zs and that'll commute with the, with the gauge constraints, and that'll allow me to excite a single uh, cube term. But we know that this is dual to Majorana fermion, and so you can see that um, this, this, the endpoint is actually just uh, excited by acting with a Majorana fermion. So if you act the Majorana, uh, this Majorana operator on the ground state, that excites uh, a fermion. So in this dual model, it shows that the X cube, this twisted X cube has a fracton excitation, which is an emerging fermion. Um, so any, are there any questions up until this point? There seems to be a question. Yes. Well, uh, I, know, I have a question. Um, 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 bef before I've seen you argue that this is a fermion based on not being able to to um to condense the excitation oh yes yes that's the sort of and that's because the the hopping operators do not commute um you mean so wait, these wait, wait, these, you mean they don't these are hopping up sorry sorry go ahead yeah these hopping operators do not commute and because you can see that they are dual to Majorana's. so for example if i take this plaquette term and i put this one right next to it you see that they 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 anti commute because they share one Majorana over here, mm -hmm. and so you cannot proliferate them. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, so now let me turn to um, a sort of. Uh, different view. I want to. I, I want to now switch gears and talk about how this can be applied to uh, viewing some SPT phases. And um, and a, a cute example you can do is you can consider uh, a plaquette Ising model in just two D, um, and you can consider a du du duality where you map fermion parity to uh, four four poly Zs, and uh, it turns out that um, you can view this as the symmetry break. So the, the pair, uh, sorry, the, the insulating phase of the fermions will map to uh, a symmetry breaking phase. And uh, the hopping of the Majoranas, you can actually choose them so that they all commute. So if I choose this plaquette operator, all the, all the plaquette fermion hoppings commute. And you can actually map this to a trivial paramagnet. And uh, these two are known to be a Kramer's one year dual if you, uh, in the sense of protecting the Z2 line symmetry. But now interestingly, um, there is a 2D cluster state, which is protected by this, uh, which is pro also protected by the line symmetries and is given by the stabilizer. But in fact, in, 
in the in the fermion language, it turns out that um, very cutely, it's just a rotation of this fermionic stabilizer. Um, and now you can also consider uh, doing a Kramer-Zwania duality on this uh, 2D cluster state. And if you do that, it turns out to give you this so-called wen plaquette model. And the wen plaquette model can now in turn be uh, fermionized and you get this stabilizer. And it turns out that this stabilizer uh, also has a, is a model which also has a Z2 top logical order, like the wen plaquette model. So uh, the wen plaquette model is uh, a version of the Tori code. Uh, so this is a fermionic uh, model which has six uh, Majoranas and also realized as Z2 top logical order. Um, you can also consider uh, a similar example with uh, Z2 times Z2 line symmetry. And now the difference is you, you have a, a Z2 line symmetry on the red lines and the blue lines separately. And now uh, this uh, Z2 SSVT, sorry, this should be times Z2, right? Um, there's a Z2 times Z2 SSVT, which has been, uh, which has been discussed by many people in this uh, workshop as a computational phase for MBQC. And, but at the same time, if you do uh, jordan Wigner transformation, when you fermionize it, you actually get um, this model. And this actually turns out to be a model with Z2 topological order called the Majorana color code. So if you put it on the correct lattice, it is actually on a honeycomb lattice where you have uh, uh, six body Majorana terms. And, uh, here I've just put it on the square lattice. But um, yeah, so uh, a fun fact is that by using this duality, you can relate different um, SVT, uh, SVT phases or trivial phases to Majorana terms, which might have a uh, topological order. Um, a second application is if you want to view um, creating new SVTs from the duality. So for example, if I start with a 3D paramagnet and I do a Kramer's one in duality, that'll give me a toric code where the point excitation, that's the usual toric code where the point excitations are bosons. But now I can condense the M loop. And by that, I mean that I consider a different Kramer's one in duality uh, by, by adding a transverse field in a different direction to, to, con, uh, to condense the loops. And what that, that gives me is a one form paramagnet. So I have, uh, I have models on, I have a model where I have a um, transverse field on only links, and I have this plaquette term where I have four Zs uh, around each plaquette. And this, uh, this model has a one form symmetry. Now, uh, alternatively, if you consider the 3D atomic insulator and you do the Jordan Wigner transformation, you get uh, a fermionic toric code. So it's exactly the same as a toric code, only that now the point excitations are fermions. But now you can also still condense the M loop. And what that gives you is a different paramagnet from the one form uh, product state above. And it turns out to be a one form SPT. And um, as Dominic just mentioned previously, this can be thought of um, uh, as it being in the same phase as this RBH cluster state. So this is also a cluster state because the, I have a single X and it's decorated by these Zs. And, um, so this gives you a, a one form SPT on which you can do um, MBQC. So you, uh, you could sort of ask, are there, if we consider other models, we might be able to obtain new SPTs. And that is indeed the case. I'm gonna give an example of a sort of a weird one where I consider, I first consider my paramagnet uh, or an atomic insulator to have this weird uh, fractal symmetry, which is called a uh, Fibonacci fractal symmetry. It's called Fibonacci just because, not because of the Fibonacci rules, it's just because the fractal dimension of this fractal operator it has a golden ratio. But in 3D, what I'm going to consider is this, this sort of cellular automata where I act on my fermion system with, say, fermion parity at these points. 
And I also uh, have like a prism of that going into, into the third direction. So, I, I, so you also have this, pr uh, uh, this fractal shape going in that direction. So that's a 3D symmetry of my system. And now uh, I'm going to do the same analogy. So first, if you start with just uh, a spin system, um, you have a paramagnet with this uh, type of hopping term. And you can check that this, uh, this uh, Ising term commutes with that fractal symmetry. Once you do the Kramer's Wanner duality, you will get uh, this so-called uh, fractal spin model, which was figured out by Vinny Yoshida some time ago. And these, this model has, uh, has excitations, and you can also condense these excitations. Uh, has an E excitation and an M excitation. And if you condense the M excitation, you will get the same, uh, uh, actually, you get the same paramagnet model, but with just the Ising term, uh, the, the, the picture of it is just inverted from the one on the left. Now, similarly, now let me start with a model with uh, uh, a fermion model with where I replace X with fermion parity, replace Z with, uh, with uh, Majoranas. And now I do this Jordan Wigner transformation. This, uh, this stabilizer will still be the same. However, this stabilizer will be something ugly that I didn't draw. But the point is that now I can condense this, this uh, the, the, the excitation correspond to an excitation of this. And what I get is now a cluster state. And I've drawn it here. Um, instead of having just a single X, I have a single X red here and all the blue are Z. And be, by construction, it sort of seems miraculous, but this cluster state uh, commutes with the, with the symmetry I drawn previously, where now, instead of P now, I have uh, poly X. So, um, and it's, it's also, uh, you have to invert this. So it's an inverted prism, but miraculously, this, this stabilizer commutes with that uh, fractal symmetry. And uh, as a, and because these excitations here, one of them is, a, this one is a, a E particle, this one is a fermion, so one is a boson, one is a fermion. So when you condense that, that means that the paramagnet and this other cluster state must realize different phases. And so this is a symmetry protected topological phase and is protected by that fractal symmetry. Now, uh, in, in case you weren't convinced, you can also, uh, uh, what condensed matter people like to argue that an SPT has an anomalous symmetry action on the 2D boundary. So if I take this stabilizer, and I consider um, this fractal shape symmetry, that's a prism. And now I can restrict, if, if, I use, if I use this stabilizer to restrict the symmetry, I can restrict it to the two endpoints. So it becomes a 2D fractal on the boundary. And it turns out that the symmetry is just this Fibonacci cellular automata, but now you have a product of poly Zs and poly Xs. But the Zs are shifted two sides to the right from the poly Xs. And you can sort of see that th um, there is no way to make the symmetry on site in the sense that I cannot just make it into poly Xs. Because in order to do that, I need to uh, sort of get rid of these poly Zs. But I can sort of, you can think, I can sort of do that by just doing control Z. But if I want to preserve other fractal symmetries as well, I have to do it in an in a, uh, in a translation invariant manner, and that'll just move this uh, poly Z fractal shape to the other side. So you can sort of argue that there's no way to get a, rid of this anomalous symmetry action. And that's why the bulk, which is this cluster state, is an SPT preserved by um, this uh, prism fractal symmetry. Okay. Um, how much time do I have left? Is, is it five or 15? Well, uh, 10 minutes or so. 10, okay. So let me quickly just, there are no other questions. Um, let me just quickly uh, uh, talk about uh, bosonizing my Rana code. Um, so I've mentioned that starting from a CSS code, um, 
you can follow this, this, this path of uh, models to obtain a new stabilizer code where instead of uh, excitation being a boson, this twisted stabilizer code has an excitation being a fermion. Now, uh, what you can do in addition to that is suppose I start with a Majorana code. Um, there's something that is called a doubling, which gives me a, a, a front in, if you input a Majorana code, you can output a CSS code, which is called the double code of that Majorana code. And the idea is that you just replace all the Majoranas with stabilizers with, to one set with X and one set with Z, and that automatically gives you a new uh, code called this double code. And now I can just follow the same procedure. From the double code, I have a CSS code as my input, and I from that I can uh, obtain a twisted stabilizer code. But in addition to that, it turns out that because we know that the fermion model, when it's in uh, atomic insulator, is different from the Majorana code, I can also Jordan Wigner the Majorana code, and this itself gives me a new code, which is the bosonized version of the Majorana code. And this must be different from my twisted stabilizer code. And um, I haven't proved this, but it, it should be the case that this bosonized Majorana code should also be different from this double CSS code. Um, so let me, let me give you a concrete example, which is starting from the Majorana checkerboard model in 3D. The doubled version is a poly checkerboard model. And from that, I can obtain a twisted checkerboard model. And ultimately, this is all these two are sort of different from a bosonized version of the Majorana checkerboard model. So uh, the checkerboard model is the Majorana version of the checkerboard model is just uh, on the checkerboard lattice with uh, on the on the blue uh, cubes you have eight a product of eight Majorana. So a single Majorana lives on this red site, and you have a product of eight such terms. And the double code is just written as the same stabilizers, but with poly X and poly Z. And there's a sort of a nice way to write this algebraically, which is you can write down a polynomial which uh, encodes the position of uh, the, the Majoranas. So since I'm sort of running out of time, uh, the, the main idea is you can just, with translation vector, you, you write down the translation vectors as a certain monomial. And, by, and uh, these polynomials of f, for example, 1 plus x plus y plus z, just says that there are Majoranas here, 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 and here. And I have two type of terms because I, I've chosen a, a certain unit cell like this. And uh, similarly, for the poly models, you can also write down a stabilizer code in, in this language. And it turns out that um, uh, by, by doing this twist procedure to obtain fermionic particles, you can obtain a twisted poly checkerboard. So this stabilizer here is exactly the same, while this stabilizer here um, now has extra poly Zs up here uh, in the form of this polynomial. And this is different from the, uh, the original poly checkerboard. And ultimately, you can also bosonize this Majorana checkerboard model, and you get a different stabilizer code, which is denoted by these polynomials. So all these three uh, models have, are, are different. OK. So um, let's see. Um, there are other fun facts that I didn't have time to mention, um, such that um, uh, whatever choice of interaction term you choose, I mentioned that you can uh, replace poly Z with a Majorana. It doesn't matter whether you choose gamma or gamma prime. Um, the, the resulting theory is uh, the same uh, in some sense. And, um, and uh, you can also make rigorous claims about uh, that the product, the pro the, in the dualities that the operators that product to the identity generate the symmetries of the dual model. And, and this course, you can rigorously prove this using translation invariance. So um, let me just uh, leave with some open question that, uh, so for, for uh, QI folks, uh, what might be interesting that, I'm, uh, that I would like to think about further is, for example, how does the bosonized code compare to the double codes in terms of error correction or uh, other computational properties of these models? And, um, 
uh, for those uh, that are perhaps in condensed matter and high energy, there are also these other questions related to uh, these uh, issues as well, such as anomalies or how to do them on general lattices where you have to care about the boundary conditions. So, uh, right on time, so let me end here. Okay, well, thanks very much. Um, are there questions? Could I ask a question? Um, yes. So do, do you have some candidates of some like uh, short range entangled fermion phases where you could dualize that aren't like commuting projectors that you could dualize to get some Majoranas as fractons? Kind of like take P plus IP and you gauge fermion parity and you uh, get rising theory as a spin model? Yeah, I mean, the duality works whether it's commuting projector or not, but I just haven't uh, done that explicitly. I guess if you, I'm, say if you start with the, 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 you know, the P plus IP superconductor Hamiltonian directly and just use mm -hmm. this duality, um, you can just get, yeah, a model for Ising. Yeah, so if, for example, um, Saga and Liang Fu have this paper that gets some kind of checkerboard model with um, Majorana. Well, it's kind of like a checkerboard model with Majorana fermions. Well, I guess right, that, right. that's still a fermion model, but could you take the layers of P plus IP and then do gauge some kind of symmetry in a weird way? Obviously, don't gauge the symmetry just as decoupled layers. And I don't know. So this one is not originally a product stable. This was already in a fracton order, right? Um, uh, yeah, like the way I they like, uh, they took like P plus IP layers and kind of gauged it by yeah. coupling it to the Majorana checkerboard model. But I'm wondering if you could do something similar, but in, to dualize it to a spin model that has like um, mm -hmm. Majorana fractons. Mm -hmm. um, I guess in principle it could be. I just you wouldn't be able to argue like what the expectations are other than just uh, theor um, theoristically, I guess, right? Because it's not exactly solvable. Mm -hmm. cool. David had a question, but he lowered his hand again. No, I do. I still do. Thank you. Um, first, the technical question about what talk. So you showed the anomalous symmetry on the boundary was these two fractals. Was that two mm -hmm. fractals or one fractal con um, consisting of X and Z? Right so, together. Yes. Okay, so, so, so it's not like a Z two cos Z two symmetry in the bulk, and that's and and those are two Z twos. It's rather it's just it's just one symmetry, and it has both X's and Z's. So that's what you meant. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and um, and you can translate that, and that somehow just commutes with all the other fractals. Mm -hmm. Yes, magically, um, and. So, and you showed some processes where you could start with one model and go through the sequence of the sequences of dualities and get out cluster states. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any examples, or do you know what they might look like, where you would end up with rather with a hypergraph state? Hypergraph, um, no, like because, because you had the fermion model, the fermion model, everything sort of commutes up to a sign, so you won't get hypergraph I see. states. Yeah. Yes, so Trit of Deva could have a question, the question and answer, so I'm not sure, should I read it or? Uh... I think that's what we did before. Okay, well, okay. So it says we can think of Jordan Wigner as replacing fermionic operators by a bosonic operator and a non-local Jordan Wigner scheme operator. Is there a similar picture for generalized Jordan Wigner? Um, sorry, I, maybe I should go read the question. Or... Yourself, but... Sorry, I, I didn't quite hear the question. Okay, it's basically saying that Jordan Wigner, uh, the normal Jordan Wigner is a string of, of operators terminated with some, some endpoint, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where there is kind of a similar picture, like a non local string operator picture. Uh, uh, well, for the two, let me see, let me go back to the 2D. I guess the point here is also that you take a fermionic operator and you make a string, but of bosonic operators. So yes, yes. Well, the, the, the point of the 2D. You need locality for statistics or so. That's how I would interpret the question. I guess the point is that uh, it's, it's sort of not well defined how the string should move, uh, how, the, how the string should, should sort of go, but because you have these uh, constraints, that allows you to move the string. 
Uh, sorry. This well, I guess if, if it were my question, I would say maybe it doesn't have to be a string. It could be a membrane or whatever, a fractal structure pulled behind that thing. Right? Oh, well, I in the 2D with global symmetry, it is still a string. But the point is that the string can be moved because of a closed loop of this F. So this F, the closed loop of F is always in the ground state, which means that if you have a F, uh, why, why is my pen up? If you have an F that has a as a string operator, you can always move it by applying this uh, plaquette operator, which is a closed loop of F. So you can move this however you want. Yeah, okay. but for the, the, the fracton cases, there'll be membranes, bro. Yeah. There's another question by Austin Daniel. Yeah, so uh, I had a question about uh, when you were showing these uh, Kramer's one year dualities for this like Zoomor model. And you were talking about how if we realize this in terms of fermions, we can think about uh, terms in the Hamiltonian as these like plaquette terms of a bunch of. Uh, uh, yeah, have a bunch of like Majorana operators. And you're saying, oh, if I simply do this 90 degree rotation, right, I get exactly yeah. this SSPT model. I was wondering yeah. if this had any uh, implication or gives rise to any further understanding of this like duality transformation that exists between the Zoomor model and... Um, I mean, that's what I'd like to think about it, but I don't have an answer at the moment. This is just an observation, yeah. I guess in 1D, you can also do like a half half lattice translation for fermions to go between uh, trivial and k type chain. I just thought that, oh, this is something similar here. You have, you do it. Or maybe you can think of it as a reflection instead of rotation. Yeah, or, or I guess I was thinking in terms of like, uh, like a sort of like generalized Kennedy to Saki transformation that exists between the, the Zoomor model and the 2D cluster state. Um, I'm not very knowledgeable about this transformation. But maybe I can ask you afterwards. Maybe sure. actually, but maybe I could say um, that, as far as I know, that transformation is for like the cluster state on a square lattice. But here he has this modified one because he's actually thinking of like the vertical and horizontal uh -huh. symmetries. So, sure. uh, so, yeah. So maybe it's, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting question. But it seems like maybe. Um, um, because it's not quite the cluster state. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's sort of on a triangular lattice for this case. If you want to think mm -hmm. about this cluster state, yeah, because you actually have an extra like a diagonal symmetry also. More questions? I, mean, I, I, I would have one. So, so, so I guess one, one application of cameras one year for the Ising model in 1D that it allows you to tell, tell where the phase transition is because the mm -hmm. model is self-dual. So can you use these kind of mm -hmm. duality mappings to, well, either identify self-dual models or construct new ones where you can say like things about the actual location of the phase transition because of some self-duality argument? Um, well, in 1D is self-dual. And well, in, in 2D, I guess you can, uh, in 2D, I think you can, for these two more dualities, you can, you can sort of say that um, the transition between this is like, sorry, what, transition between these two are the same as between these two, but to my understanding, these transitions are first order, so I'm not sure if it's gonna be helpful. But yeah, I, I don't know examples of these, like for fractals or a subsystem that they're, uh, that they're second order. I would be interesting if there is an example to study. Okay, are there further questions? I guess if not, there is another coffee break now, is that correct? Uh, yes, there's a coffee break and uh, we will be back at 12, uh, 12.30. Okay, so thanks to all speakers of the session and uh, see everyone in half an hour. Yeah, the discussion room is open if you want to continue with the discussion uh, discussion with the speakers uh, at the other Zoom link. Uh, so it's, uh, I initiated that. There it is. Yeah, I'm just